I like aircraft. I've always been fascinated with the engineering miracle that is powered flights and all that that entails. The fact that something so huge can get into the sky and travel at massively high speeds across the globe is incredible when you think about it, and that's before you put any guns on it. The addition of munitions to an object hurting through the air being a mad prospect, even just over a century ago. These days, of course, combat air is a fairly common concept. I mean, everybody has watched Top Gun. So with my interest in these predators of the sky, it's natural that it would translate across to my hobby. The most obvious parallel into the world of the 41st millennium is that of Aeronautica Imperialis, the airborne skirmish system from Games Workshop. I have a small Imperial force made up from my favourite aircraft from the law, Lightnings, Vultures, Vendettas, and of course, Valkyries. But as it is fairly well known in our little community, my game of choice is by far the most popular game, Warhammer 40k. And that too has aircraft in abundance. One of my favourite armies, the Volcanus 22nd Air Assault Brigade, a custom force under the Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard banner, heavily features flyers. I already have a Valkyrie, a Vulture, and my personal favourite, a Vendetta. As you may have guessed by the name, the 22nd Air Assault Brigade quite favours aircraft, using them to rapidly deliver shock troopers or tempestuous scions into battle, allowing them to close with the enemy under the cover of flying artillery. I've had many a game where these three flyers zip overhead, disgorging squads of heavily armed stormtroopers into battle whilst providing close air support to the soundtrack of howling engines and the smell of napalm, and probably fortunate sun, often in the morning. A recent development in the Warhammer 40k meta has threatened this vision of sci-fi apocalypse now. The change of flyer rules mean you can only take a maximum of three, and one per 1,000 points of your army. This threatens my full airborne assault, stopping my planned seven flyer death provider, uh, trademark, dead in its tracks. So what should I do? Swap the flyers in and out one at a time? Only take a maximum of three at the upper limit of the points cap? Ignore the rules and bring in all available air support into the stack, ready to bring the judgment of the emperor to doubters, one guided munition at a time. Yeah. So today we're starting with the first of several flyers I intend to add to the Air Assault Brigade, an Imperial Navy Lightning Strike Fighter, specifically the Voss Baton one. As I build, let's have a look at what it can do and what it's meant for. It's worth mentioning that I did all the standard resin cleanup, washing and such beforehand. Now rules. Firstly, it moves like basically every other flyer and doesn't have a hover mode. It's toughness 6 with 14 wounds and a standard minus 1 to hit, so we need some dedicated targeting to take it out. It has two standard las cannons for anti-armor, and for an extra 20 points you can take a lightning hell strike rack, which is essentially two 72 inch melter shots that are always d6 plus 2 damage. It does degrade on its lowest bracket only hitting on 6s, but it's only 150 points to bring along fully kitted out. Is it the best fighter in the world? No. Is it fun? Yes. Does it look cool? Hell yes. Look at this thing. It's the angriest fighter bomber I've ever seen. With all that aside, let's get painting. I decided to whip out the airbrush for this project. I'm using it more and more lately and growing in confidence with it, so I wanted to try a couple of newer techniques. I started with Leviathan Blue contrast paint all over the initial primer. This was going to be my pre-shade.
Once that was dry, I started with a mid-tone of Cantor Blue. I mixed this up with some thinner and focused it on the bigger panels, avoiding the gaps between armour plates and any significant recesses. Then I mixed in some pale grey blue from Vallejo into what was left of my thinned Cantor blue, this time focusing even more centrally on the armour plates to help keep that gradient. Why did I lose Vallejo here? Because it's a dropper bottle. So much more user friendly for an airbrush. Plus, this paint replaced my Celestra grey, which decided to dry out on me for no good reason. After these stages, I was super happy with the armour colour, and dare I say, proud. I then started blocking in the black areas, of which there were many. The las cannons, cockpit glass, hellstrike racks, and various cables. I then blocked out all of the metal areas with lead belcher. I always find base coating blacks and metals to be really boring. Black, so it was nice that this sculpt didn't have a huge amount of them, and it meant I could get back to the fun parts sooner. I stopped here to have a look at the Lightning's little brothers and sisters, the teeny tiny, ever so cute Aeronautica Imperialis equivalents. I painted lots of patterns on the wings, differing from aircraft to aircraft, and the missile tips were different colours based on the roll. Red for Hellstrike, air to ground, and yellow for Sky Strike. Fairly obvious what they're for. After looking at these, I decided to use red as an accent colour. I quite liked the yellow V's on my vendettas, both big and small, to the same aircraft, how cute is that? I decided for red V's on the lightning, and prepared to start masking up. I gave a quick spritz of matte varnish first, just to make sure I didn't peel off all those thin airbrush coats. I have this tiny masking tape I think I got from Hobbycraft, and it was perfect for this task. I was able to make both sides match fairly well using individual rivets and the features to help line up the tape. After this I painted a few thin coats of corn red between the lines. Once I was done, I peeled off the tape. So satisfying.
I tidied up the gaps and any areas I'd gone over with the appropriate colours. The colours were a little flat compared to the airbrushed armour, so I gently stippled some really thin Mephiston Red and then Evil Sun Scarlet into the Vs before glazing back over with Corn Red to tie the colours together. I also glazed some colours onto the cockpit to create a bit of a sheen. Incubi Darkness, Thunderhawk Blue and Fenrisian Grey, followed by a glaze of Pterodon Turquoise that I thinned very heavily with some matte medium. I gave a nice edge highlight of Fenrisian Grey around the sharpest points. This really helped the model pop. At this point I started jumping around the model, dry brushing some grey here, adding some shade there, nothing out of the ordinary, just to get some of the less visible bits done and looking acceptable. Then it was time for some transfers. I have these wolf head transfers that I made myself quite a while ago. I've had them for ages, specifically for my guard flyers, so I decided to crack them out to make the wings more interesting. I chose these large stylized wolf heads. After cutting them out and soaking them in water, I used micro sole micro set and some contrast medium to help them stick to the aircraft and blend in with the flyer. There's a lot of raised detail on the wings so these tools are essential. Now the model is mostly there, I wanted to crack out the oil paints to add some subtle weathering. Aircraft are naturally dirty while we're flying through all kinds of particulates, 
alongside being big, oily, greasy machines. I used a burnt umber thinned with mineral spirits along the edge of the wings, and then took a dry brush, as in a dry brush, not a dry brush, and feathered it along the wings, in the direction of travel to help create streaks. I did this on all the forward-facing surfaces. Followed this up with a yellow ochre that represented earthy particles getting caught in the recesses of the panels. It also helped differentiate the streaks and make them a little more interesting, rather than just being one colour. Finally, using some Games Workshop washes through Seraphim Sepia, Agrax Earthshade, Druki Violet and Drakenhof Nightshade, I created a heat bloom effect around the exhausts and engines, and generally dirtied up the mechanical parts to help the craft look like it was in a lived-in environment. This thing's a Warcraft, it's not just come off the shelf. So that's the model complete, and I'm super happy. All that's left is to base up. I usually use GW texture paints like Astro Granite for my Imperial Guard, but on these big bases a little pot doesn't go far, so this time I decided to be a bit thrifty and use some ballast I had in a little pot. I put down some Mod Podge and spread it about with a spreader, and bit by bit dropped some ballast down on top. I then followed this up with some bigger scenic rocks from Hobbycraft, and I stuck that down with some PVA. Unfortunately here is where my camera card decided it was full, so there's no footage of this bit. Masking up the clear flying stand, I sprayed the base black, as it was looking a little bit monotone. I used a wide, soft dry brush to move up through some greys for some natural rock texture, ending on some Ulthuun grey for the sharpest highlights. I then added some tufts here and there, and some pretty flowers, plus some snow. I like pretty flowers. Seriously, look at my sister's a battle army. Flowers on bases are cool. And there we have it, one flyer I definitely cannot use at the same time as the rest, but I will anyway, you know, if my opponent is happy with it, or whatever.